Now, in our next two lessons, we're going to start talking about using Arduino pins as inputs, and this topic gets a little more complicated, so we're going to break it up into a couple videos. First, let's revisit what we saw in an earlier lesson with using buttons that were just hardwired in series with an LED. So here I have an LED that is wired in series with this button. When I click and hold the button down, the LED turns on. Neither the LED nor the button are connected to any of the Arduino pins. Now, what I have on the lower half of the circuit here is an LED connected to an Arduino pin, which we've seen before using this pin as an output. We can use code to turn the LED on and off. What we haven't seen before is a button connected to one of the Arduino pins, which we can set as an input, and then we can use code to turn the LED on and off depending on whether or not the button is pressed. Now, in this very simple case, this might seem unnecessary, as you could do this just by hardwiring the button in series with the LED, but in general, this concept of connecting inputs and outputs is very powerful and will allow you to program more complex behaviors or control more advanced hardware, for example, sensors and motors on a robot instead of a button and an LED. One thing you might notice with this lower part of the circuit is that we have an extra resistor over here that we are lacking in the top part of the circuit. So to explain what that resistor does and why we need it, we need to talk more about the properties of Arduino pins that are configured as inputs. So this information is taken directly from the Arduino website. You can access it at this URL. Pins configured as inputs are said to be in a high impedance state. This is the equivalent of having an extremely large series resistor in front of the pin. This means that it will take very little current to change the state of the pin from high to low, and it also means that the pin will draw very little current from the circuit it's connected to. That seems nice, but the downside is that means the pin will be very susceptible to fluctuations and electrical noise if it is configured as an input but not connected to anything. So if you have the pin set as an input, and maybe there's a wire connected to it, but it's not connected to anything else in your circuit, it will very easily pick up changes due to static electricity or a capacitive coupling to nearby electronics. So you have to be careful with that because it could result in a floating or undefined logic state, which is a problem when you want your code to really just have two defined states of high or low for the pin and not anything ambiguous or bouncing in between. So to get rid of that problem, we can use pull up and pull down resistors. Let's look at the circuit diagram to explain that. So I'm going to use this diagram to represent a button connected to an Arduino pin. This is the Arduino pin set as an input. This is the circuit symbol for our push button, which you've seen before. And when this button is pushed, we are going to have a direct connection to plus five volts, which is going to set the Arduino pin to five volts. Again, you might think this is a short circuit, but you don't have to worry about too much current flowing into the pin because the pin, when it's set to an input, is the equivalent to having a very large resistor in series with this pin. So that's fine when the button is pushed, but it is a problem when the button is not pushed because of that definition we saw on the previous slide that this pin is just going to be floating or susceptible to noise and we're not necessarily going to know its state. So we don't know if it's high or low, and that's going to be a problem because we would like to just have two defined states of high when the button is pushed and low when the button is not pushed. We can get around that problem by adding a pull down resistor, which is a resistor from the pin to ground. So since ground is at zero volts, we know in this case the pin is not going to sink or source any current. So no current can flow through the button because this is an open circuit. We know that the pin has the equivalent of a very large resistor in series with it, so there's only going to be a very, very tiny, minuscule amount of current through this resistor, so we'll effectively call that zero. According to Ohm's law, when the current through a resistor is zero, the voltage drop across that resistor is also zero. So there's no current through the resistor. The voltage here is also zero, which means the voltage that the pin reads is going to be zero. So now, instead of having an undefined state, Thanks to this pull-down resistor, we have a voltage of zero when the button is not pushed. When we push the button, now we have that direct connection up to five volts. That is a shorter, lower resistance path than the path to ground through this resistor. So that is going to pull the pin up to five volts. So we've now gotten around this problem of floating by adding the pull-down resistor. We have just two defined states of zero or five volts. 
If we wanted to reverse this and have the voltage be high when the button is not pressed and low when the button is pressed, we could swap the physical arrangement of the button and the resistor. We would have the resistor up to 5 volts, which makes it a pull-up resistor, and we would have the button go to ground. So knowing all that, we can go back to our circuit and answer the question about what this extra resistor is doing. You can see I have this resistor connected between the pin. So remember that these two sides of the button are connected. So this end of the resistor is connected to that wire, which is connected to the input pin. Connected between the pin and 5 volts. So this is acting as a pull up resistor. The other end of the button is connected to ground. So by default, this pin is going to be pulled up to 5 volts. When I push the button, it is going to pull this input pin down to ground. And you can see that when I run the simulation, this works, and when I click this button, it turns the LED on. If I delete this resistor, then my code no longer works. When I run it, my LED is just staying on all the time, and the button is not responsive. Now let's take a look at the code for this project. So ignore the code in the while loop for now. We're going to go over that in the next video. For now, let's just look at our setup code. So we have the DDR register, which you've seen before. We have set pin 7 to an output by writing a 1 to that bit. All of the other bits are zero, which means these pins will be inputs. The only one we really care about is pin four. So even though the other ones are going to be floating, we're not using them for anything in our code, so we don't care about them. And one other interesting feature here is that the Arduino actually has internal pull-up resistors that you can enable through software. So I am going to uncomment this line of code here that is using the port D register. So previously we had learned that the port register can be used to set the value of an output pin, high or low, by writing the corresponding bit to 1 or 0, respectively. You can also use the port register to enable an internal pull-up resistor on an input pin. So in this case, I have pin 4 set to an input using the DDR register. I am going to write bit 4 to 1 using the port D register. That is going to enable the internal pull-up resistor on this pin, which is functionally equivalent of having that external pull-up resistor. So even though I have deleted my physical external pull-up resistor, I've now uncommented this line and enabled the internal one. And you'll see that now my code will work again. As expected, the LED turns on when I push the button. So there is no assignment for this lesson. We just needed to make sure you understand pull up and pull down resistors before we move on to the next video, which will explain what the code inside this while loop is doing and how we are using the button to control the LED.